As you look at the Bowman's capsule and the uh, glomerulus together forming this entire structure, which is called the renal corpuscle, notice that it has a distinct polarity. This end is the tubular pole. This is the beginning of the proximal convoluted tubule. This is the vascular pole. This is how the afferent arteriole and the efferent arteriole enter and leave the renal corpuscle. Let's take a closer look first at the tubular pole where we have the beginning of the proximal convoluted tubule. The cells that are lining the proximal convoluted tubule are cuboidal in shape. And notice also that they have a specialization on the apical membrane. There are numerous microvilli present on the surface of these cells. And these microvilli are going to increase the surface area, which is going to increase the efficiency by which solutes are going to be reabsorbed from the filtrate. Now let us look at the vascular hole the larger arteriole is the afferent arteriole. It is the means by which blood is going to enter into the glomerulus. This is the efferent arteriole, and it's the means by which blood is going to exit. Notice that the afferent arteriole has been cut open right over here. This is going to contribute to a structure called the juxtaglomerular apparatus. Juxtaglomerular apparatus is a complex structure, and essentially it's designed to control the rate at which the filtrate is formed. It does this by monitoring what kind of filtrate is coming through the distal convoluted tubule at this point, and somehow this is communicated with these cells, which then can respond by adjusting the pressure of the blood that is entering the glomerulus and thereby modifying the rate of uh, the formation of the filtrate and also by secreting some regulatory hormones that can also affect blood pressure and the rate at which other hormones like aldosterone is secreted. Now, the part of this distal convoluted tubule which is going to contribute to the juxtaglomerular apparatus is shown right over here by these cells, which you can see are, are a little bit taller than the other cells that make up this distal convoluted tubule. These cells would also be more densely packed. As a consequence, this, this region of the distal convoluted tubule is referred to as the macula densa. So the macula densa is a spot in the wall of the distal convoluted tubule that is right next to this afferent arteriole. The cells of this afferent arteriole become modified, and these cells are referred to as the juxtaglomerular cells. The juxtaglomerular cells represent modified smooth muscle cells.